It's July 30th, 1945, and the USS Indianapolis is on a top secret mission to deliver parts of the nuclear bomb that will be dropped on Hiroshima in a week's time. The delivery is a success. On its return trip back to the US, as night falls, there's a loud deafening bang. A torpedo from the Japanese Imperial Navy smashes the side of the ship, sinking it in only 12 minutes and leaving hundreds of sailors and marines defenseless and vulnerable in the ocean. Beneath the waves is the oceanic white tip shark named after the white tips on its pectoral fins. The loud bang has attracted hundreds of these aggressive sharks, with a reputation for being dangerous to shipwreck and plane crash survivors. Of the almost 1,200 people on board, 300 died instantly, going down with the ship. The remaining 895, with no food or water, and while clinging onto debris to help them float, faced severe dehydration, exposure, saltwater poisoning, and shark attacks. It is estimated that around 150 people were killed by sharks, making it the deadliest recorded shark attack in history. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's free and it helps out a lot. Prescott Bush, a wealthy banker and politician, and the grandfather of former US President George W. Bush, was accused of helping wealthy Nazis store and hide their assets in American banks. The bank's assets were seized in October 1942 by the US government under the Trading with the Enemy Act, and held for the entirety of the war. Nazi war crime prosecutors have even argued that there should have been grounds for prosecuting Bush for giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Henry Ford is another famous American accused of having been a Nazi sympathizer. In 1938, Hitler awarded Ford with the Grand Cross of the German Eagle, the highest medal available for a person of non-German origin. Even during the early stages of the war, Ford Motor Company continued to do business with Nazi Germany. Ford was even mentioned in Hitler's autobiography Mein Kampf, and Hitler had a life-size portrait of Ford in his office. The Black Death, a bubonic plague pandemic, is the most fatal recorded pandemic in human history. Taking place in Europe, Asia, and North Africa in the 14th century, it is said to have killed up to 200 million people, more than 20% of the world's population at the time. That's an estimated 30 to 60% of Europe's population in the 14th century. The decline of the woolly mammoth population began around 40,000 years ago, becoming almost fully extinct 12,000 years ago. The mammoth population remained extremely low, but they did not become fully extinct until only 4,000 years ago. The last known mammoths had been alive on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Ocean 4,000 years ago. With the Great Pyramids having been built only 4,600 years ago, that means woolly mammoths were roaming the earth for many years after the pyramids were built. There is more time between the existence of Stegosaurus and the T-Rex than there is between T-Rex and humans. Stegosaurus existed between 155 to 145 million years ago, in the late Jurassic era, whereas T-Rex existed 68 to 66 million years ago, in the late Cretaceous period. That means that around 87 million years separated Stegosaurus and T-Rex, and only 68 million years separates T-Rex from early humans. For thousands of years, lead was put in some wines as a sweetener and preservative. The famous composer Beethoven, an avid wine drinker, loved the sweet taste of lead in his wine and had many health problems during his life which have been attributed to lead poisoning, one of which was going deaf. He began losing his hearing before the age of 30 and was fully deaf by age 45. He composed his famous song Ninth Symphony, which you can hear playing now, while fully deaf and was the conductor when it first played in a famous theatre in Vienna in 1824. The Australian paralysis tick can cause paralysis by injecting neurotoxins into its victims. Sounds bad, right? But a rare reaction can make things much worse. Its saliva contains tick proteins and a mammalian protein, which could trigger a potentially life-threatening allergy to meat, from cow meat to poultry.
At around 5,531 kilometers long, the Dingo Fence is the longest fence in the world. Located in Australia, it stretches from eastern Queensland all the way to the South Australian coastline. It wasn't built all in one go, rather in parts over many years. To put just how big it is into perspective, its length is approximately the same distance as New York City to Paris. Made in the late 1800s, its purpose is to keep dingoes and rabbits out of fertile farming land. Australian camels are famous for being wild and genetically diverse. In the 19th century, they were imported from Iran, Afghanistan and Pakistan. This genetic diversity makes them less likely to fall victim to large-scale disease. Being disease-free and also entirely free-range, their meat is highly valuable to Saudi Arabia, the second largest consumer of camel meat. This high demand for meat, and with previous supplies in North Africa and the Middle East being less reliable now due to disease, drought, famine and war, Saudi Arabia turned to Australia for a guaranteed and reliable supply. Do you know the phrase, he could sell sand to an Arab? Well, Australia does just that. Apart from exporting camels to Saudi Arabia, Australia exports sand to them too. Saudi Arabia has a shortage of river sand, which is free from silica and is shaped differently. It needs this special sand to use in the building industry. And as Australia has plenty of sand in its rivers, it exports many tons of it each year to Saudi Arabia. Famous writer Mark Twain was born on the day Halley's Comet flew by Earth. He famously said, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year, and I expect to go out with it. It will be the greatest disappointment of my life if I don't. He died of a heart attack on April 21st, 1910, the day after Halley's Comet's closest approach to Earth. Halley's Comet is a comet that approaches Earth once every 75 to 76 years. Erno Rubik, the creator of the Rubik's Cube, took one month to solve the cube after he created it. The current record, held by Yu Sheng Du, is 3.47 seconds. To be fair to Erno, he didn't have YouTube to help him. A cloud can weigh up to 500,000 kilograms. Luckily, the moist air in the clouds is less dense than the dry air below them, stopping it from coming crashing down onto the earth. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you liked the video, drop a like.